Hi, welcome. I'm Wendy Ann, and this is Suddenly Heavenly. I've been so looking forward to this program for so like two months now, and I'm so excited to be here because um, I, I experienced a Suddenly Heavenly. Um, this particular program is all about comfort in the garden. It takes place, I'm going to have a clip that I'm going to play, and it takes place in a cemetery. And I just want to give you a briefing on this. Um, God is so present in a cemetery, and of course, my mom had passed on, and I, I sing to her there, and I, I'm very, I'm so, I love cemeteries. It's so peaceful, and to me, it's a garden. I look at it as a garden, and um, when I think of the bodies that are laid to rest, they take on a different form now when we go into heaven, much like a seed that's planted in, in, the, in, the, in the soil. It, it, it grows into something so beautiful when it's watered and it's loved, and that's how we are. We, we simply take on another form. When we, when we go to heaven. And so I have a very special friend. Her name is Dana. And um, she helped do this clip with me. And we were in the cemetery uh, later in the evening, actually early evening. And uh, we wanted to just go see her mom that was buried there. And, and, and I noticed all these beautiful, beautiful decorations and the trees and, and the candy canes and the, and the nativity scenes. It was so glorious. And I noticed solar panels were everywhere so I was praying again with my friend and it was getting a little bit you know sun was going down and there was a particular man that was highlighted so the Holy Spirit put it on my heart I want you to go know this man I want you to go speak to him so so I was I, I was obedient I, I went over there and he was bundled up it was really cold and uh, I told him this tree that he was sitting by was so beautiful it was purple and just glistening and he said, well, thank you. That was for my, my daughter, Timory. And my heart just sank. I knew that this was, must have been so hard. He had lost his daughter. And, and then I'm going to, you'll see more in the clip. She had passed away when she was nine years old. And, and, and just the tribute that this family has given her with decorations on the tree. And he goes there every single day. This has been going on for seven years now. And so the Lord put it on my heart to beautifully highlight this lovely little girl. She's one of his little flowers that he took very young at her age, but he's, she's in the presence of Jesus. Um, but I wanted to celebrate her life. I wanted to celebrate the time they had with her and show you beautiful pictures of her and a little bit of this family. And again, it takes place right near her grave. And I just want you to see how beautiful this is. So may you be blessed. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start the clip. Go ahead. Suddenly Heavenly. Now this is a whole other type of clip I'm going to be showing. Um, I just wanted to start off by telling you that I was, I'm in a cemetery right now and I'm very peaceful at a cemetery. I love being here. Um, I was just really, really captivated by the most beautiful decorations, the tribute that people had on the most beautiful grounds here at the cemetery. I mean, life-size trees, and I noticed when I was walking around, I, I couldn't believe that the, the solar panels and, and, the, and the, the nativity scenes and the candy canes and the angels and everything I was seeing. And so Dana and I were here, and there were just a couple people that were highlighted. The Holy Spirit had really spoken to my, to my heart and said, I, I want you to go speak to this person and the other person. And one of them was a, a young man he was sitting in a lawn chair and he was bundled up it was cold like it is right now like I'm bundled up and I'm gonna have you meet him in a second and his family and anyways he was sitting in front of the most beautiful tree it was purple and it was all lit up and I really really wanted to know more and so I, I went up to him and and told him that what a lovely tree and then he said I'm here with this 
lovely family. I want to introduce to you Briley. And this is Jerry. Briley is the lovely sister of Tim Marie that, that had passed on. And this is their, her father. Um, you were talking about there's a ritual. There's something that you do that, that is all about your sister as well and, and your daughter. What, what is it? that you were talking about earlier. Um, Did so you sprinkle something around the tree? T together we make uh, reindeer food. What do? Oh, you do? So How cute! Here. It's oatmeal and glitter. Oh. So I made it this morning. And then what we do, we just take it out and sprinkle it on the grass. How cute is that? Is that something that she did? Yeah, we did that at home. And then, oh, we do it here, and, and then, then we have another, we have another friend, friend over there, that Isabella, we that we go and we uh, give the reindeer food. We put reindeer food, food for her, too. Mm -hmm. How sweet is that? And then also, um, you have decorations that that go on the tree. Um, now, it was Tim Marie's birthday as well, not far from her birthday, Christmas. Yeah, her birthday was on the 13th. Okay, so you, you were telling me that that you have friends that come and so bring her a, a, so like a little gift. on her birthday, gift. her friends from school or friends she's, she's met, they come down here and they all bring a birthday-related or a butterfly-related Christmas tree ornament, and they decorate her, her tree with, with those ornaments. And we've been doing that for the last seven years. Seven years. My gosh, I can't believe it, and she would have been 16. Can you just tell me, from both of you, your... Let's see something that really stands out that that you remember her by can you tell me something briley that that something maybe you did with her in the past or little things that that would, would only represent her um, like something she loved or something you did together as sisters or can you think of anything yeah she uh, we always played dress up Aww. and we'd always dress up in princess clothes Aww. that yeah oh that's so special and jerry what, what, what comes to your mind now? Obviously, you Ooh. had another beautiful daughter. Oh, she, Timmy and I would always go on hikes. So this wilderness out here, these hiking trails out here, are something that we would have done. Uh, we'd go and catch lizards out there. We'd uh, look at the critters. We'd just kind of walk, and she would never stop talking. She'd always be asking questions about plants, about animals, about everything she sees out there. She would be asking questions. So. Uh, just being in this spot here, oh. being able to look out there, see the horses go by, see critters out there. We see coyotes, we see bobcats, and the frogs, and the snakes, and the lizards, and everything that we see just sitting out here uh, really reminds us of her every day. And you know, please tell me, I, I know this is, it's been seven years now since your beautiful daughter has passed on. And I, when I say passed on, I just mean she's in the hands of Jesus now, in the Lord. And so can you, Tell me what your your daughter Timory was known when she passed away. Can you tell me exactly anything she had cancer? Yes. Um, Timory was diagnosed when she was seven um, with a very rare cancer called orbital rhabdomyosarcoma, which is cancer of the muscle behind the eye, her left eye. So she endured treatment and it's a very fast growing cancer but it's also a fast dying and the first time the first year of her treatment it was a textbook case she followed the whole regime of what she needed to do and and everything was working and so she endured this treatment for nine months and then in October of 2007 she had her last treatment so we were very excited and then she was on her way to be in remission and we had a Thanksgiving together and a nice Christmas and all the holidays and her birthday. And then in February of 2008, we were at a bowling alley and um, she was acting a little strange, but she loved to make impressions, voice impressions of um, people. And she loves to do a British accent and she was doing a British accent, I thought, and I kept asking her, but she wasn't doing that. Something was different. Um, at the point where we just needed to rush home and we took her to the hospital and we found out she had a stroke. So the cancer had spread from her eye, it now had spread to her brain and her spine. And so the next, um, from February till December 21st, 2008, everything was different. It wasn't the textbook case, it was a lot worse, um, wasn't recovering and, and all of those things. And so we went to Chalk Children's Hospital of Orange County um, the second time, the first year we were at CHLA. 
and we wanted to come to Chalk because we wanted to make sure Briley, who was just in her first year in kindergarten, that she would um, be able to see her sister as much as possible. So we lived it up in the hospital and enjoyed our time there for what it was worth and we celebrated most all of our holidays that year in the hospital and on her birthday December 13th in 2008 her ninth birthday um, she loved dogs and she loved critters like we mentioned and so um, the child life specialist at Chalk got all of the pet therapy dogs and got a hold of most all of them that volunteer and she had around the clock for eight hours she had um, a dog coming in every half hour. She had 20 dogs come to visit her um, on her birthday. Uh, it was so exciting and so special and Bradley got to be a part of that. And then um, unfortunately eight days after her ninth birthday um, she passed away on December 21st. But her spirit is so alive. <laughs> brought me to this lovely family. Jerry and Debbie and Briley and Timory, you know, we're all, we're all together. And you know what, Timory is, is, is hearing this. I know she is. And Lord, she is with you right now. So I thank you so much for bringing us all together. wonderful family. I couldn't have been more blessed. I, I received a suddenly heavenly when we were there at the cemetery. Um, you know, I have a perfect scripture, and I want to thank you, this wonderful family, Debbie and Jerry and Briley and beautiful Timory, which is still very much alive, like I said on the, on the clip there. Um, in Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is near to those who are brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. That's probably why, you know, Naturally, being an encourager that I am, I think that's why I'm probably drawn to a cemetery. I, 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 there's a lot of people that are hurting there, and I just, you know, bring out the best when I'm there, and I bring out God's glory when I'm there, that, that all the loved ones, again, they've taken on their heavenly bodies now, and that it's just kind of like a temporary separation right now, and then we see each other. And so I also want to talk about this scripture. This is Matthew 18.10. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. This is so perfect, isn't it? And then another one is, it's doing our part. It's 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. It's praised be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. And that's what we all, it's, it's all about that, comforting other people. You know, I've, I have not lost a child, so I can only imagine what that would be like. I've lost my mom, and I know I still cry for her. I miss her. So, again, um, I, this is just one flower out of that beautiful garden, that whole cemetery. This is one of their stories. So I wanted to just bring awareness, you know, we, we walk by and we see the graves and all that, and, and it's just, again, I, God had highlighted them. I wanted to bring out the beauty in this family. And then here's one more, is Romans 8, 17 through 18. And if children, then heirs, heir of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, 
that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Amen, amen on that one. Boy, we sure go through a lot. And so this will now lead me to, of course, being, like I said, the, the cemetery, again, it's, it's like a garden to me. And so I thought it would be so perfect to talk about a song that I want to sing. It is called In the Garden, and uh, it's about Jesus in the garden, and it's a, it's a song of hope. And I want to give tribute to this song as well. It's so beautifully written. Um, I will tell you that it, it was written by C. Austin Miles. We'll call him Miles. Um, he was born in 1868, and he was actually a pharmacist. And, uh, you know, as he got older, and during the pharmacy times, um, he loved taking pictures. He was a photographer, and so he had that on the side, and he also kind of, he loved writing thought songs, hymns and songs. And he came up with one at, at some point, and it became really popular, and he realized this is, what, this is very rewarding to me. People are really touched. This is glorifying God. I want to do songs now. So he, he really was kind of rolling that around and thinking, I, 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 I have to do this. I, I want to sing, and I, or I'm sorry, I want to do music for the Lord. So um, during this time as well, he was doing his, like I said, his photography. And he had his beautiful devotional time with, with the Lord in his little homemade little dark room that he had, that he had made for, you know, developing the pictures and all. And this is where he said he would meditate and he would just feel such a beautiful presence of the Lord in this little room. And his great granddaughter was saying that it was just a dark, dreary, cold place, you know, um, no windows or anything. And so he was actually um, reading his Bible. He was, and, and he noticed this beautiful blue hue on the wall. It was just like angelic. It was like a heavenly type blue cast on the wall. And so he was reading uh, John chapter 20. And he, this is his favorite chapter with Mary Magdalene and, and going to see where Jesus was. And she didn't see him at the tomb and she cried. And so as he was looking at this wall and he was just kind of meditating, it's like, it's like he was there. All of a sudden he was present. And I want to read to you in his words what was going on at this time. And this is what created this beautiful song. Okay, so here we go. We have, as, as I read it that day, the chapter, I seemed to be part of the scene. I became a silent witness to that dramatic moment in Mary's life when she knelt before the Lord and cried, Rabboni, which means teacher or rabbi. My hands were resting on the Bible while I stared at the light blue wall. As the light faded, I seemed to be standing at the entrance of a garden, looking down a gentle winding path shaded by olive branches, a woman in white with, with head bowed, hands clasping her throat as if to check, to choke uh, back her sob. She was sobbing so hard. Walked slowly into the shadows. It was Mary. As she came to the tomb upon which she placed her hand, she bent over to look in and hurried away. John in flowing robe appeared, looking at the tomb, then came Peter, who entered the tomb, followed slowly by John. As they departed, Mary reappeared, leaning her head upon her arm at the tomb, and she wept. Turning herself, she saw Jesus standing, and so did I. I knew it was he. She knelt before him with arms outstretched, and looking in his face, cried, Rabboni, one more time. I awakened in sunlight, gripping the Bible with muscles tense and nerves vibrating. Under the inspiration of this vision, I wrote as quickly as the words could be formed, the poem exactly as it has since appeared. That same evening, I wrote the music. And then this song, I mean, this is interesting. The song was never changed. Total downloads from the Holy Spirit. He wrote it down, the music, everything done. Never, ever was changed at all. And so this song was made popular. There was a program, evangelistic campaign, called the Billy Sunday, and that's where the song became really, really popular. And again, it was written in 1912. So anyways, as we know, when you hear this song, you'll hear, again, he put himself in Mary's shoes where he was walking with Jesus, and, and, and Jesus was talking with him, and, and, and they were just so close, companions in the garden. So I'm going to sing this song right now, and I really, really hope you enjoy it. It's a lovely, lovely melody. So when you're ready... Are you ready? Ready, Jennifer? Okay. I come 
to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the song of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy stay in the garden with him though the night around me is falling but he bids me walk through the voice of woe his voice to Jennifer, you know, I just want to say about this wonderful Jennifer, this wonderful friend of mine, we are very close, and you are just the most amazing keyboardist, pianist, everything. You, you oh, sing and everything. I just want to thank you for being here because I am so happy when you're with me. Thank, thank you for doing that with me. Thank just wanted to pay you. honor to my friend here. Okay, so we only have just a few minutes left. Um, I want to always give everybody an opportunity to give their heart to the Lord you know, people have written beautiful songs when they've given their heart to the Lord. People do beautiful things, and, and life becomes wonderful when we, give our heart, when, our, when we give our heart to the Lord. So I just want to give you this opportunity. I mean, when we, when we give our heart to Jesus, we, it's, it's God's gift of eternal life. Um, all of our sins are forgiven and wiped out completely. Peace of mind and real freedom from guilt. It's washed away. Everything is different. We see things different. We hear things different. We do things different. Our intentions and our heart are different. It's just the most beautiful life we can have. It's the way God always intended it to be. So I just want to go ahead and say this prayer with you. Please say it in your hearts, okay? Okay, so dear Lord Jesus, right now I choose to walk your way. Thank you for giving your life for me. I now receive your forgiveness for my past. I ask you to please come in and take control of my life. Thank you for your awesome gift of everlasting life. From this day forward, I want to follow you. 
Help me to understand your word and pray each day so I can live to bring honor and glory to you. Thank you for taking me into your family. I ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you for those of you that have received Christ in your heart. Welcome to the family. That's what I always say. And that this is your first suddenly heavenly if you haven't experienced one. <laughs> Life is about to open up and God is going to speak to you and, and show you things that you didn't see before. And so another thing I wanted to share with you, this is something that I found in my files. It is the cutest thing ever. <laughs> And so, again, this whole show is about comfort in the garden. And so this is a little, it's, I don't even know what you call it. It's not really a poem, but it's just a little something. I don't know. But it's called How to Plant a Special Garden. It's, again, it's really cute. I hope some of you really appreciate this. Um, first, you want to plant five rows of peas. Preparedness, promptness, perseverance, politeness, and prayer. Next to them, you want to plant three rows of squash. Squash gossip, squash criticism, and squash indifference. And then you want to do next the five rows of lettuce. Let us be faithful, let us be unselfish, let us be thankful, and let us love one another. Last but not least, no garden is complete without turnips. Turn up for worship, turn up with a smile, and turn up with determination. Hey, that's what it's all about. Is that the cutest thing or what? I just had to do that. So again, I just want to thank you all for watching. And another thing, too, is what I want to bring awareness to this as well, with, with going back to this lovely man, Miles, that had written this lovely song. One thing that he did that, that, that he became very good at is, is uh, again, meditating. He had his alone time, his quiet time with God. And that's when you can almost... It becomes an art, but it's, it's the way God would want it to be, where we're so meditating. It could be on a, on, a, on a scripture. It could be on a chapter. When you're reading the word, just meditate on it. And it's almost like visual, visualize yourself being in this scene, just like Miles did. He, he visualized it, and before he knew it, he saw that he was actually there. He really felt like he was, and, and I, I believe that he was. He got these wonderful downloads, and then beautiful music was created from this. So it just, it's just quiet, quiet time with the Lord. And thank you, God, for bringing television here and for everybody to, to be blessed and to know who you are, Lord. And uh, thank you for, for, for all the blessings you're, you're, you're going to have on all these people. And thank you for this lovely family. And, Lord, I just pray for all the other, other families, anybody that's grieving right now that is going through really, really, really very very hard times the lord i know you're with them lord and may your comfort be all over them and just envelop them show them your presence in jesus name we pray and thank you so much for being here and we'll see you we are here the second monday of every month at 6 p.m so may you have a suddenly heavenly bye